100 kilometers downriver, Gordon's been dogged by rain too. But his search is proving more productive. Come and see this. Nice. Very nice. These are the tracks of either a very small tiger or a leopard. These are just ultra fresh. Look at that. It's like just literally just been made. These are the first big cat tracks that I've found. <laughs> oh, that's good. Man, I was beginning to worry because there's almost nothing coming up this riverbed, not even samba deer, nothing. And then to find this is all the encouragement that I need to maybe put some remote cameras. We've got a big cat right here. Only if Gordon gets a picture of it can they tell whether it's a different tiger or one they've already seen. A thousand kilometers away in India, George is traveling to Bandafgar Tiger Reserve to find out why every single tiger has become so precious. Very loud horn for such a small scooter. India used to have lots of tigers and they were all over the place. And now they're just clinging on to small isolated reserves and they're surrounded by a sea of humanity. And I, I, I don't really see how tigers will be able to survive in the long term when they haven't got anywhere to go. As the population of the Indian subcontinent has exploded, tigers have been pushed out of their former habitat. Numerous protected reserves have been created, but tigers are now confined to far smaller ranges than they need. There are 27 tigers in this core, uh, which is about 100 kilometers square, which is the range of one male tiger in the wild. There's not enough space within the park boundaries. Inevitably, tigers wander outside and into direct conflict with humans. Local tiger expert Digpal has been battling with this problem for over 10 years. What are the risks for an, a, a tiger individual if it has to go outside, if it's, if it's pushed out? They start killing cattle or buffaloes or whatever they get. So the maximum risk is uh, they, the villagers, they poison the carcass. And that's where the poachers can also go. So it's a very high risk, yes. Very high risk, yes. Tigers feed on a kill for several days. If they prey on cattle outside the reserve, angry villagers poison the carcass. When the tiger returns, it is doomed. It's a world away from the unbroken forests of Bhutan. Gordon is heading back to camp to do a first check of his remote cameras. One or two casualties, most of them intact. That's how they're supposed to look. This is how they look once. An elephant has got a hold of them. <laughs> Do you know what? I could probably repair that. But just how good has Gordon been at second guessing the tigers? Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. Wow, look at that. Another one, another one. Gordon struck gold. Images like this of tigers is precisely what we need. Just look at that. They are such amazing animals. You know, if ever there was an animal on this planet worth saving. It just it has to be the tiger.
Gordon has four images, but they may all be the same animal. He'll have to leave his remote cameras recording until the end of the expedition, and then compare all the images to see how many different tigers are living here. In India, where tigers are trapped in small areas, George can easily see them with his own eyes. Look, 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 look. Oh, look at that. And there were two cubs. There's an adult tiger about 100 yards from the car. So that is a female with her two cubs who are about a year old. Beautiful, beautiful animals. I mean, oh, look at that. They're uh, practicing, they're stalking. Look at that, it's so beautiful. It seems slightly unreal, actually, I have to say. I mean, seeing a tiger this close it, in Bhutan would, would be just unthinkable. I mean, it would never, ever happen. It's a privileged view. But these young tigers face an uncertain future. When that male cub reaches a certain age, he, he'll have to move on. And it's not clear what he would do. He can't certainly occupy the same range as the other males in the park, so he'll have to go. It's unlikely he'll get far beyond the park boundaries. Even tigers within reserves are no longer safe from poachers, who supply the Chinese medicine market with tiger bones and body parts. Even in the isolated populations where the big cats still survive, they're under great threat. They're being killed there as well. But if we save tigers within the last remaining isolated populations, we still have a problem because the long-term survival of just an isolated population is in grave doubt. To avoid genetic inbreeding, male tigers need to roam over vast distances to find new females. Space is what Bhutan's forests could offer tigers along the Himalayas. This is just incredible. This fog forms over the top of the water. It almost looks like the river's on fire. Oh, it's a cave. It's a waterfall. I'll bet this is home to thousands and thousands of bats. While the rafting team makes camp for the night, Steve hunts for signs of tigers. Okay, this is gonna seem like the most tenuous bit of tracking out there, but I have been asked to record every one of the tracks that fits a tiger profile, no matter how degraded. These tracks, well, they're going in that direction, but that's the first one I spotted. They're coming back down here. And this one, I think, is the clearest. It's very circular, seems to be heading in this direction, and these look much more like toes to me than they do hooves. Um, the next thing really is just the size of it. That is the perfect size for a tiger track. You know, there's no way you can say this is evidence, but Alan will be able to tell an awful lot better than I can. So I'm just gonna take this data back and hopefully he'll tell us more. In India, George has spotted a fully grown adult male. There he is. Oh, God. Look, look at him. Absolutely magnificent. Look at him. Look at him. 
Oh, oh look at that. Look at that. What a magnificent beast. It's the most incredible animal. I, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm hooked now. Wow. It's the first time I've heard a tiger roaring like that. That noise is just amazing. Pretty emotional, actually. I, I, I feel very, uh, very emotional. I'm a bit shaky, actually, after that. Seeing them now so close, it, it brings it home to me even more what a tragedy it would be if these animals were to ever become extinct. The hope is that we can help the tiger, which is a very adaptable animal, to increase. And, and that, you know, it's not hard to do. It requires prey, it needs space. we just got to stop hunting and poisoning and poaching and allow the animal to move freely. In reality, what you want is a, a, a massive area through which it can roam. Currently, all you've got is little fragments of original tiger habitat, which hold a few individuals. And that won't work for very long. We need to join these up. And I now see how it will work. You can join these areas up and tigers are able to move freely. With so many people living in India, there's little chance of linking tiger reserves. Along the less densely inhabited Himalayas, carefully managed land within a conservation corridor would offer tigers safe passage between isolated populations, creating one giant refuge in which they can roam and breed. The tiger corridor is an ambitious plan, but it's a very, very doable plan. It's become Alan's life's work. Nine years ago, he was diagnosed with incurable leukemia. There's not enough time for me. I've got to spend whatever time I have left making sure that this tiger corridor becomes a, a reality, making sure that tigers are saved for the future. I think about, it's really interesting because I try not to think about my leukemia, and yet it's in my mind every single day. It's in the back of my mind every waking hour because it drives me now. It drives me to, to keep on doing what I know I do best right up until I can no longer do it. The rest of the team's inspired to work day and night. Justine's trying a new tactic to learn more about what lives alongside the big cats here. So what I'm doing now is um, going to walk some of the trails at night with these elephants so I can conceal myself behind them. But also, their smell is quite domineering, so hopefully it will disguise my smell. These are all just ideas I have and they may work. If we cover enough distance, I think we've got a good chance of seeing some things. And it's just nice to be out walking in the forest and not sitting and waiting. I feel a bit more proactive. Deep in the forest, Gordon's remote cameras are a secret window into this world, revealing behavior which would never otherwise be seen. Sam Badia stomps his forelegs nervously. He's being stalked by wild dogs. Ruthless predators who hunt in packs. A wild boar investigates the camera, unaware of the shining eyes of a leopard just a few meters behind him.